The way I would describe Twisted Metal, a, a super uh, high action uh, car combat game. It spoke to this kind of heavy metal rock and roll, uh, bad 70s, 80s, you know, hard rock album cover art vibe that I've always loved. Twisted Metal is a lobe in my brain. Hard rockin' car combat at its finest. Cars would drive around an imaginary city and shoot at each other. Twisted Metal Universe was never slated to be a very uh, Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> Twisted Metal, on a certain level, is still Rock'em Sock'em Robots. There's a spirit and a soul to the Twisted Metal universe, and it's American, and it's rock and roll, and it's underdog, and it's scrappy, and it's kind of heavy metal. I started at Sony as a tester right out of college. Um, total, I had no clue what I was gonna go make movies, it was my plan. And uh, I worked on some games for Sony and then this, this it was actually funny, me and my design partner at the time were, uh, we were kind of hanging by a thread. I mean, we pissed off all the developers we worked with, we thought we knew everything, we knew absolutely nothing. And our boss called us in when he heard about these guys in Utah who were working for the military. And he says, look, he's, I, remember, I remember this meeting. He's like, he's like, look, my feet are at the fire on this with you guys. It's like, this is, this is kind of your last chance. It's like, don't screw this up. My thing was when I first got into the industry and I, I sat down with David Jaffe and, you know, I was coming from a very conservative engineering uh, development environment, working with government and people that wear suits. Uh, it was very refreshing to see all these ideas just come pouring out and I thought, oh my God, how am I going to, how am I going to harness this? How am I going to, you know, try to take this and, and, you know, turn it into a production environment. We had uh, gotten back from Utah the very first time uh, when we saw this three-dimensional database and we saw basically what 3D gaming could be and we were stuck in traffic out by the LA airport. I think it's sort of a, uh, at least for me, and I, I, I hope I'm not making myself crazy here, but I think it's a natural fantasy people have to be stuck in a car in traffic and just want to have missiles and guns on your car. And I thought, wow, this is so obvious. Hasn't someone else done this? And it was a great pleasant surprise to know that, well, no one has done this, so I was pretty excited and it was pretty straightforward. So for me, I kind of like the more simple type of uh, game concepts. You kind of see this game for what it was just at the concept levels. And we were so excited and we wrote up this big design document and we sent this off to these guys. And about a week later, the guys in Utah sent us back this document, which was a pizza delivery game. At the time, that sounded really cool and it would have been such a disaster <laughs> because how many times can you sequel a pizza delivery game? I don't remember how we somehow talked them out of the pizza delivery game. I wasn't, I, I'm not very articulate now, and I certainly was less articulate then, and it may have simply been me on a phone call going, are you out of your mind? When the game was shown to uh, Ken Kutaragi uh, out in Japan, and this was towards the end of the game, his comment was, when are we going to replace these graphics with real graphics? That feedback got back to us and the team, and we were just like, what the hell? You know, it's like, we don't have time to change these graphics. They are what they are. The other uh, interesting comment that the Japanese had, uh, uh, a request to switch the weapons out for, uh, fi instead of firing missiles, firing uh, food groups like vegetables and fruit. We were pretty sure that uh, Sony Japan was not real happy with the title. We had uh, this focus test with these hardcore gamers that came in and uh, 
they just tore the game apart. This was towards the end of it. We were about to put it into marketing, get money from marketing to advertise it. And they played it, and it was the whole night they were making fun of it. Yeah, the description of it was, it's a fighting game in cars. And so the focus, that, the focus test was comprised of hardcore fighting game gamers. And they just didn't really get you know, how this was a fighting game in cars. I said, I'm going to start looking for a new job tomorrow because they're going to fire me because this is a disaster. And uh, it turned out not to be. It turned out that we ended up, and I, I was stunned because somebody told me, oh, you guys got game of the year. And I'm like, what are you, you, know, what are you talking about, right? And then it turns out, and I won't mention the magazine because I don't think legally we can, uh, but we ended up getting game of the year from the most prestigious game magazine that was out at the time. And I was just, it was amazing that it all actually worked. I mean, this was the first big game I had ever done. It was the first game these guys in Utah had ever made. Um, and we ended up with a game that a lot of people really, really loved to the point that we were getting these major awards. And so it all worked out. I have no clue how. Maybe we all just got really lucky. I don't know. But it was, it was cool. It was very, very cool. Congratulations. You have won my contest. I hated the end movies for Twisted Metal. <laughs> I just thought they were, they were extremely cheesy. You just, and we just and I, and you, and them, you don't know! I did think that some of them turned out a little too hokey. I am the winner, and you are my prize. If the movies somehow had wound up in the game, it might have hurt Twisted Metal 1. I didn't realize any of this at the time. I thought I was making, you know, my calling card into Hollywood. You'll drive forever! What do you say, Mr. Kane? Sounds good to me, baby. They were terrible stories, and they were terribly written. I think that was part of the uh, the charm and, and, and appeal to them. But I, you know, first and foremost, I think this is some of the content uh, was, uh, you know, very offensive to some of the people on the team. We want more. Yeah. Done. And the guys in Utah just hated them um, and thought they were offensive and terrible. And we basically had to, you know, do the damage control to make sure that, you know, we ended up with a great product. Uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the movies were one of the casualties of that. I was upset because no one was going to see my masterpiece of, of hot, sexy women standing around a, a crumpled, twisted metal car and, you know, spouting off stupid lines like, here's your paper bag, sweet tooth. <laughs> Oh, man, give me that, give me! A paper bag? You can't be serious. I think for what they are, they're really fun and campy and they add to it, but, you know, they, they never quite saw the light of day. And, and that's, I was really disappointed at the time. Now I can look back and be grateful that it was actually a really good lesson that I should never be a film director and I should never, ever get behind a movie camera because only bad things can happen.